and welcome to a new series of things. This is going to be a little bit different than my um, normal style of like videos, I guess. Usually you guys are used to seeing more witchy things from me. Um, and I guess this one does play into that. But I have this really, really big obsession with um, unusual stories criminal investigation stuff, paranormal stuff, um, conspiracy theories, anything out there weird, interesting, unusual stuff, all that junk. Um, and I think a lot of us in the witchy community usually are, not all of us. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take a break from doing witchy spiritual stuff in my own experiences. And I want to tell you a story that has been really intriguing me for a while. Without further ado, let's get into the Winchester Mystery House. So the Winchester Mystery House is a giant mansion. Um, and it's got a lot of interesting architecture, a lot of odd architecture, and it's located in San Jose, California. Now this house is literally like the goths or the witches ultimate dream of like what they would do with their money if they came into wealth. This house is like a labyrinth of weird staircases, hallways, um, doors that open up to nowhere or doors that open up to like walls and stuff like that. There are windows in odd places, all sorts of interesting things in this house. Um, it kind of reminds me of like, if you guys ever watched Danny Phantom, like the character Sam from there, it reminds me of like, if her family just gave her all of their money, what kind of house she would build if she were able to. <laughs> so the main interest point of this story and to do with this whole like amazing house is Sarah Winchester, or known as Sarah Lockwood Party at Winchester. So Sarah was actually the owner and lived in this house for quite a while. According to the website, from 1886 to 1922, the construction never stopped in this house. It was constantly going. There was constantly things being added to it. It was expanding. Um, Sarah was in the works of making this house a lot bigger and a lot crazier. <laughs> Apparently there were no real like blueprints because usually with the house you'll have blueprints created and everything like that um, for how the house is going to be. So this house was kind of created as they were going, you know, it wasn't like structured plans together everything was just kind of chaotic and all over the place so it originally started as an eight room farmhouse and now has grown into this big i want to say it was 160 room house now <laughs> it's really big according to the website it is a 24,000 square foot house it has 10,000 windows 2,000 doors 160 rooms 52 skylights 47 stairways and fireplaces, 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, 6 kitchens, 3 elevators. It was built at the price of $5 million in 1923, so according to the website today that's equivalent to $71 million today. A lot of money. As I said before, this house is a sort of labyrinth of like architecture. There are doors that lead to nowhere. So like you'll be on whatever, like the third floor, right? Open up a door and there's just a drop to your death. <laughs> so you need to be careful where you step in this house. Some of the doors will lead to just walls or other bedrooms or whatever. So not only is this house a bunch of random sets of things all over the place and weirdly built, there's also a lot of numerology in some of the architecture in the house. So one of the main numbers um, that we have that's very prevalent in the whole house is 13. So you'll see 13 in the windows, 13 in the mirrors, 13 things like on the floors, on the walls, in panels, all sorts of things. It's all over the house. So it's very interesting that Sarah seems to have like kept this number very prevalent throughout everything. Um, another thing you'll see a lot in this house is the symbolism of the sun. 
Um, you can see this on the outside gate. Same thing within windows and stained glass. So the sun is supposedly supposed to connect to the zodiac and how there are like the 12 signs. The sun is supposed to be like in the middle to count as 13. So there continues the 13 um, symbolism again. Very interesting. Sarah was also said to have quite the stained glass collection. Now one of the only rooms in the house where she actually had words on her stained glass was in the ballroom and the stained glass was actually quoting uh, Shakespeare. There are two different windows. One of them says wide unclasp the tables of their thoughts and the other one says these same thoughts people this little world. I feel like honestly all she would have needed is Edgar Allan Poe in here and literally ultimate goth house, right? <laughs> But I digress. She also, interestingly, had a seance room. If that's not witchy, I don't know what is. <laughs> and obviously, since she had a seance room, the Winchester mansion or mystery house is known to be haunted. So surprise, surprise, you've probably seen a bunch of like, like ghost crews go there. I believe Ghost Adventures has been there and them among many more. I mean, this place is supposedly crazy haunted and super interesting. Some of the not so spooky parts of the architecture are really interesting because Sarah was said to be way ahead of her time with some of the things she had in her house. For instance, she had this like call button system. I'm sure I'm sure you've seen it in like um, movies and stuff like that where somebody will press a button on the wall and then it'll like do a little ring and then it'll show you what floor they're on or whatever. So Sarah had one of these in her house. Among that she had like call tubes so you could like talk through the call tube and then someone down on whatever floor would be able to hear like pretty well. Apparently it worked really well. Among that, she had like the easy riser stairs because apparently, you know, like when you get older, it's harder to walk upstairs. So they gradually go up very slowly. It's not like a steep step. Uh, she had three elevators in her home. Wow, like three elevators in your house. Can you even imagine that? Amazing. <laughs> she had a needle shower. I don't know what makes that specifically different from regular showers, um, but she had one of those, so fancy. She had faucets supposedly everywhere because she was really into gardening, so I guess uh, she was in help of creating the garden faucet like outside so you have more faucets all over the place instead of just like the main kitchen and then the bathroom. Supposedly she also made things easier for not only herself but her servants so like I was telling you with the the call buttons and then also the little um call tubes she had like things that were like corner uh, little things that'll go in the corner of like the stairs so dust or dirt wouldn't get stuck there and it's easier to sweep. So she had washing boards built into like the um, laundry sink area. So like when you're washing them, they're built uh, into the actual side of it. So obviously she was just way ahead of her time with some of these things. So getting back to the actual Winchester house, something that was really interesting that happened in 1906 is there was a really big earthquake. So before this earthquake, this house had reached up to, I believe, seven stories worth of craziness, right? Um, and after the earthquake, I guess a bunch of the upper floors were damaged severely. And Sarah, from then on forward, basically tore all of those down and decided to build outward instead of upward. So now, obviously, it's expanded a lot further outward. Um, compared to up. So let's hop into a little bit more about Sarah's history. Um, she was an heiress to her husband's, I guess, company, the Winchester Rifle um, Fortune, basically. So the Winchester Rifle was made, and this was a really, this was supposedly quite the invention back in the day. Um, I believe it was used in a lot of wars or something like that. So Sarah was an heiress to her husband William's uh, Winchester Rifle Fortune. Unfortunately, William ended up dying of tuberculosis on March 7th of 1881. This hurt her really badly, especially since their daughter, Annie, had died in 1866 of some sort of disease, only 40 days after her birth. Um, this disease is supposedly 
Merasmus. It's kind of confusing because Merasmus is supposed to be like a disease created from lack of food or nutrients or like just bad water. This doesn't really make sense since they were a rich family, right? So it could possibly be some sort of different disease and maybe just um, pronounce death wrong. I'm not too sure. So that's kind of interesting. It is said in some stories that after William's death, Sarah started to search for advice and apparently she found this medium named Adam Coons. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So Coons told Sarah that basically the fortune of the Winchester rifle, and since this gun uh, had been used to kill so many people, that there's like this curse on her family now. So Coons basically told Sarah that in order to appease all the angry spirits that were killed off by this weapon, that she needed to build a house in order to, you know, make the angry spirits happier. Um, that's just one of the theories. Another theory is that the house was actually built to get rid of negative spirits. So it kind of goes back and forth depending on what you believe and what's been said. I'm not too sure which is the truth. And if you remember, I told you about that seance room that Sarah had built earlier on. Um, so apparently in the seance room, each night she would ask the spirits what to build next. Again, not sure if this is the truth of the story, but this is just one of the things that I read online and I thought was really interesting. Sarah was obviously very superstitious. She kind of believed in spiritual things. She had a whole thing for numerology. Um, I also believe she was a tarot reader and possibly used Ouija boards. I could be wrong, but I read this on a couple of different things. So another thing that I've read is she also didn't like people taking photos of her. So she didn't allow anyone to take photos of her. And I'm not sure if this is because there's like that whole folklore about how if someone takes a picture of you, they like capture a piece of your soul. So maybe Sarah believed in that and didn't want that to be a thing. Um, there is actually one photograph that was taken of her without her knowledge, and here that is. And so yeah, super interesting. Um, I really wanted to talk about this story because it kind of adds a little bit of witchiness to a topic I was trying to introduce anyways. Like I wanted to start talking about unusual things or possibly crime stuff. I wasn't too sure how to introduce it. So I thought this would be a really good way to kind of involve some of the witchy things that I'm interested in because Sarah seemed to have been kind of witchy or spiritual herself. I thought it'd be a good way to kind of interlink them and start something new. Let me know what you guys think of it and maybe I'll create more of this series. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really do hope you enjoyed this video because I enjoy learning about topics like this. So yeah. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love. Bye.